Hey guys, what's it out here? It's Sunday. I don't usually record vlogs on Sunday, but I did say I was delaying this week's because of what I'm going to be talking about, and I'm not alone in this one. Say hello to Melty Snowgirl. Hey. You're right. So, yeah, let's. <laughs> let's for those who don't know, which is probably going to be, shouldn't be anybody, uh, last week, two weeks ago, uh, a terrorist, and I am going to call him a terrorist because as far as I'm concerned, that is exactly what he is, shot up two mosques and live streamed himself to Facebook doing it. And the reason why it's got um, a, lot the, a lot of gamers' attention is his reported references to PewDiePie and Fortnite and other games. Um... Yeah. He's just trying to pass the buck or garner attention, really, isn't he? Yeah, I think it's just a, uh, like, it, it's a dog whistle to deflect the attention from him to the other mainstream things like Fortnite and PewDiePie. Like, because they're like, because people want something to blame other than the obvious internet echo chamber that this guy became was a part of. Mm. So he's trying to point it. It's like, Hey, guess what? It's these things fault to guard, like to, to manufacture outrage and deflect it from him. Yeah. I, I'll be honest. I'm not a huge fan of PewDiePie. I think some of the stuff that gets leveled at him, he brings on himself. Yeah. Using racial slurs in the streams is liable to do that. But yeah, he does bring it on himself a little bit. But it's why f I know Fortnite's big, but why I don't understand why bring PewDiePie into it because it, I, I guess it depends on where you're from. Because for me, I think Ninja's bigger than he is at the moment. So why not go after Ninja? I have no idea. I think it it's because PewDiePie actually has used. Um, as part of his shtick, a lot of uh, Nazi symbolism, and he's also done a joke about like hiring a black guy for Fiverr to do the Nazi salute as a joke and stuff. So he does have a lot of racially charged jokes, and I use that with quotes, yeah, because I don't think they're funny. No, um, he, I mean, streamers and YouTubers, they have the word influencers. I mean, I, I'm going to come off to PewDiePie because I agree with you regarding the wider toxic internet culture, but I, I, I wanted I want to go to PewDiePie because I can't... Yeah, yeah, it's a smokescreen, but at the same time, you can't do that sort of stuff. And then, you know, the internet's not a vacuum. We don't live in a vacuum, you know. These things come from somewhere. You see someone doing that sort of thing and you're gonna go oh hey maybe that's appropriate it's just i wanted to get the pewdiepie thing out there because i i don't he didn't cause this but he's not as innocent as he's trying to make himself out to be in the oh wide, definitely the not context of what he gets up to on his streams and you know i honestly think he does it for the views because you know manufactured outrage he knows that it triggers the buttons he knows that people will come in and give him the traffic and give him the ad views by posting this outrageous stuff whether or not he believes it or not mm. he knows that it'll be bringing in the traffic regardless of you know it's just outrage because the outrage culture that's going on now yeah but somebody, he must understand that somebody somewhere is going to think he's being serious. I think, I don't know, man. I'm not him, but he might, like, he has to think that. He, now he has to think that. Because well, in the not, past, he probably... Yeah, if he's not questioning it, there's something wrong with him. Exactly. As I said, I'm not, a fan, I'm, not a, I'm not I'm not his biggest fan. Um, but particularly because of all the stuff he gets onto, but I can see why he's what you know if this was anybody else you could people would go oh it is deflection it's just outrage but he has a reputation and it's a well-deserved reputation as far as i'm i'm concerned and he he is part as we're going to come on to the wider internet culture which let's be fair i think anonymity is an is a, another thing that may well well for me should be the thing that should start coming under the spotlight 
Definitely. Like an, you have the compounding of the anonymity plus echo chambers that everybody gravitates to to validate their ideas. And that amplifies the toxicity. Like just don't like don't do this, but look at I don't literally look at this, but look at 4chan and 8chan yeah. or even the Donald or our Paul. Like you got to look at those. They are big Internet echo chambers for the alt right. And Tumblr is for the opposite side. It's the extreme left echo chamber. So you have two separate echo chambers just on the extreme sides. It, it's just wrong. I'm not... Well, obviously, I'm, I'm not for... Um, I've completely forgotten the word I'm, I'm trying to find now. Censorship. But I do very much believe that freedom without limits isn't freedom is anarchy um yeah is it time to now start seriously policing the internet because i'm beginning to think i'm beginning to think that it is we know we know where 4chan and 8chan we know what the domains are it won't be too difficult to track down where the servers are why not just take them offline because there is like honestly that's a government interference in a way like i'm i believe in you don't want to have government interference in your speech in a way like I live in Canada and it's a really dicey situation here because we do have hate speech laws. Yeah, as I say, we do here as well. Um, yeah, you have to have the hate speech laws. There's a little, like, that's why I say there's the dog whistle because right now here in Canada, we're coming up against an election season and the conservatives, which are like our, you take your Tories and then add a little bit of Donald to them, and you've got our conservatives now. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds a bit like our conservative party. <laughs> no, they're even they're worse because they're founded by the they're, they're, there's a little bit of uh, rebel media which is owned by Ezra Levant, and it's an extreme right wing uh, thing. And we do have the hate speech laws, and there's a difference. Like, oh, it's hard to explain. Where you're right to say like racial incite hate ends but like there's private companies like if you look at people who get banned from facebook like alex jones and all that he's complaining about being censored he's not being censored by the government no. and that's where the american first amendment is it it limits the government censorship so but then again, yeah it's one of those really, really slippery slopes, right? So, like, you get these laws in, and then what if you get an alt-right government? You don't know, right? So it's, like, a very slippery slope. That's and crazy. I have yeah. no idea how to address it, because you have all these disenfranchised people, so to speak, getting radicalized. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, it seems, looking around, like, the internet culture is, is bleeding into... Um, quote unquote IRL in terms of the way people handle things. Oh, and, tell me and, about and, and, it. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just like it, it's in some people's minds, they disagree with something, therefore any reaction is justifiable. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very, yeah, thinking about it, I mean, I, I think from my mind, I'm saying, yeah, censorship, but in my mind, I'm, I'm very much, I think, well, but new kind of realization, I'm saying, yeah, the extreme right, you know, you need to flipping shut these lot down. Um, but then again, in, in, I guess in another way, extreme. Do you think there's, do you think there's a, there's a problem with the word extreme? Is, is there an extreme, extreme left? Extremists, but from both are like you got okay we're to, like the extreme left you have like the massive social justice warriors that get offended over everything and, like i like they call they scream cultural appropriation if a white person practices yoga or eats chinese food you know that's the extreme left uh, okay. they get triggered over like a white person like eating like curry you know or like come on how would you feel if someone ripped into you for having a curry after a pub yeah it's like and and the indians are so outraged at this cultural appropriation they're the ones making it and serving it exactly so that's the extreme left is they get they get they go overboard on protecting the rights of people who are not white and to the point where they're speaking over them 
Yeah. And that's getting a little bit too much. Ooh, you still there? You can't. Oh, yeah, I'm still oh, here. I just yeah, didn't so, release the alt key. Ah, I know. So then. Now, and this is great. I'm actually loving the fact that I've, I've got someone else on this because it's like. I think everyone can agree something needs to be done, but. Yeah, we just we're, don't know what we're, we're, needs to be done. And we went, and you can very quickly enter into very, very dangerous territory. Yes, and you have people like Jordan Peterson, who is using his degree of psychology to manipulate everybody as well. He, he's he's a outright pundit here in in Canada. Yeah, he's he got really upset over uh, being quote unquote forced by the Canadian Human Rights Commission to uh, acknowledge the identity and pronouns of transgendered people. And he's gone off on a total loop. And he's now doing paid tours and everything. He's making money off of this. <laughs> and he's using his degree to manipulate people's minds. At that point, it would be the, the, the private companies. But then again, there's always going to be private companies and individuals who are willing to pay for that and pay for mm -hmm. someone like him to come in. Exactly. That's when you get like the private, because that's where you get the echo chamber effect. Let's talk, let's talk about gaming for a sec or game gamers. I'm going to use the blanket term because are they, are they just part of the same sort of echo chamber or is there something that they just get into their minds that being a gamer or being on the being an online internet gamer they they're expected to act in this way i think it's a little bit of both because uh like you look at it like there are people who like you look at the gamer boys and gamer guys right they are like your classic nerds in high school where people like shoved into lockers and bullied them and it's sort of like a shit rolls downhill thing you know yeah you beat the monkey beats you up you beat up another monkey it just keeps going and going and that's how i see it yeah. as a as a female who games yeah. they they get really angry like some get thirsty and some get really mad when you're in a game with them I'm lucky I am the game I play is has very little toxicity. Actually, it's really well maintained. But I've seen a lot worse out there. Mm. I've heard a lot worse. I'm I'm microphone still working. Yeah, it's really, really it can get really ugly like if you play uh like if I went and played League of Legends, I've heard I would have so I, I actually played like half a match when it was in beta and then I left because it was just so bad. Are you still there? I'm still here. Yeah, I've just internet's cutting out. I wouldn't worry about it. It's all fine. What, where, did, where did all this come from? The world where it was, what has got into their heads that says that it's, it's acceptable? Oh, I think you have gone now. Yep, I'm still here. Hang on. Hang on, guys, we're having some, uh... Uh, oh, hang on, what's going on? Let's try that. There we go, I was oh, just wondering what's going on. I just had to restart Discord. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's pretty bad. Like, you sit there and you play, like, any game and, like, uh, when I'm playing MechWarrior Online, I'm in the lower tiers still, like, the even though I've been playing since beta. So I get the people who migrate from Call of Duty and Battlefield. And as soon as I speak on comms, they're like, oh my God, it's a girl, it's a girl. And one, and some people just go off on me. It's crazy. Purely the fact that you're a girl. I don't, don't know anything else yeah. about you. Exactly. It's like, just because you're female doesn't mean you get special treatment. I'm like, um, okay, what gave you that idea? And what, you defines, and, and what defines special treatment? <laughs> right. It's an online arena shooter. You can't get special treatment. There's no drops or anything. You just go in there and you shoot stuff. Yeah, it sounds pretty simple. It's very simple. But, so yeah, you go in, you kill the other team, you win, you lose. 
there's no special treatment. No. The the only thing I can think of in, is the as you said, it's the, the, the nerds and the people who got, who got picked on, but these are the guys that sort of just have somehow found these websites and have just got sucked in and then that just filters through absolutely everything which like then comes back to why not just shut these sites down i agree i honestly think they should be shut down because they don't not just uh they don't just uh radicalize people there are actual illegal con illegal images that have been shared on these websites from what i've gathered yeah. so they're they're a cesspool of illegal activities as well so even they should be shut down just for the sake of that of course, they'll just find another echo chamber, right? So maybe the authorities want to keep these sites going because they know where to find them. You know, they can easily monitor because I know uh, CSIS actively monitors Stormfront. By the way, guys, by the way, Stormfronters, CSIS actually monitors you guys. So, um, <laughs> so you guys, so yeah, they know where to find them. They actually actively monitor these sites for radicalization and whatever happens, happens. They know where they are. Yeah. Basically, it's a little rat trap and they know where to find them. So maybe in a way they don't want to shut them down because it just makes their job easier so they don't have to go look for them again. Never really thought about it that way. Hmm. Because you got to think of it like, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. right there, you know, <laughs> if they if someone actually does go off and do an, does an illegal thing, there's the whole litany of posts and everything right there as evidence. Yeah. There's a digital paper. It reminds me of something somebody, my, my uh, someone sort of asked my dad, asked my dad a number of years ago, and this was um, when we were trying to find Bin Laden. They were saying we can read the fine print of a newspaper from a satellite, but we can't find Bin Laden. And my dad went, "Yes, because we know where the newspaper is." Exactly. So that's basically why, because uh, they don't. Because here in ca Canada, we do have a bit. We did. I don't know if we still do. But we do have a radicalization pro problem up here. Alex Bissonnette, which was also quoted as one of the New Zealand shooters' inspirations, yeah. he went and shot up a mosque. He was this radicalized white guy, Matt make Canada great again. Quebec is a very big, like, you think Canada is a big multicultural thing, but Quebec has, itself has a big radicalization problem hmm. because they're, they're a they're a minority population in Canada as a whole. They want to protect their French culture, which I understand. And they see multiculturalism and Anglicism as a huge threat to this. Like, it's just insane here sometimes, especially in Quebec. So it's easy for them to get radicalized. Heck, the guy who went into Parliament and shot up Parliament was also radicalized from Quebec. Oh, yeah. You heard about that. The killer on the Parliament Hill here in Canada? Um, well, he didn't kill anybody. I vaguely remember, yeah. Yeah, what? back in 2017, I think. Oh, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, now I know what we're talking about, yeah. Yeah, he. it was crazy. But, yeah, he came in and he was also radicalized. Like, any. Like, you look at Canada's radicalization problem, and a lot of them come from Quebec and also Alberta. We have very strong right wing sim sentiments up here and we're trying to we're trying to stop it, but it's really hard because of the internet echo chamber. The internet just gets hold of something and just doesn't matter, doesn't matter how tr true it is, usually it isn't true and it just gets recycled and recycled and recycled and it's just a boarding on brainwashing really, aren't we? It is. It's exactly what it is. And you have p people like the rebel and Paul Fromm and just amplifying it. Like immigration is bad. We have thousands of illegal immigrants coming in and all these illegal immigrants are stealing your jobs. And that's the big, that's one of the big things, right? Because our unemployment rates are, are holding steady. It's not the best unemployment rate. It's not the worst. And you see all these people who are complaining about all the immigrants coming in and taking their jobs. 
these refugees are leeching our tax money and taking our jobs. I'm like, how can somebody be on welfare and take your job yeah. at the same time? Yeah, they, 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 they don't sort of link the two together. <laughs> right? And then they're like, yeah, and then they get all the health care and all that. And I'm looking and I'm downtown Halifax and I see people, I see Syrian refugees driving cabs and they have medical degrees. And here we are with a doctor shortage. I'm like, we can easily fix this issue here if you just remove your racism. Yeah. But no. Racism never went away. Everyone seemed to think that it sort of did when we... Oh, from the British perspective, it went away when we dealt with Hitler. Yeah, <laughs> that like, didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. Your country has a pretty big uh, racism problem still. It's not over, but it's oh, you, it you got to know what you got to look. Oh, oh, it's no, over no, now because oh, of Brexit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 they're, they're not even trying to hide it now. Wow, um, it's like it's like that. You know, they they dress it up and try and pretend it's not a bit about races, about race, and it's just yeah, blatantly is. You know, I I genuinely I I know a lot of people who voted for Brexit, uh, and I think they did it, you know, for their, the various reasons. But a, a, a last large portion of people did vote for it because they want to basically kick everyone who's not British out. Is basically why they voted for it. So they want to lose all their curry cook, all the, all the people who cook curry, and you know, all like honestly, Provide like them healthcare, you know, yeah, look after their pets, clean up the streets, um, all the things that they don't want to do. Exactly, it's like well, that's my big issue. When someone says, "Oh, the immigrants are stealing my job," so are you going to go out and pick those berries? Are you going to go? Um, like go to the farms and harvest all the food and are you gonna clean the streets drive cab just are you gonna do all that yeah. no well then those aren't your jobs that they're taking oh the, yeah the, the classic one is like that's the, he's stealing my job is like yeah he's got three degrees and he's studying for another two and what do you have exactly he's lucky he, he's they got an asbo yeah possibly they've probably got one of those yeah <laughs> Uh, He's got three degrees, one in neuroscience and all that stuff, and you've got an ASBO. Um, who's gonna win? Yeah, who's gonna who's gonna get who's gonna get that brain surgeon job in job? I reckon. I wonder. Right. So that's why I really don't like it when people like and Americans are just as bad with the illegal immigrant from Mexico. I'm like, okay, you guys have been profiting off of this illegal immigration for a very long time now through your domestic servants, you know, nannies and um, the farm labor and construction work because they can get w away with paying these guys pennies or even not at all now to re report them to the immigration authorities. They've been profiting off this for years decade like a long long time and and they're like still complaining about illegal immigration taking their jobs but there's actually crops rotting in the field now because their ice rounded all a lot of them up and sent them on home yep of course what you expect it's a nation built on slavery right of course all most of our nations have been built on slavery but they still have they're going on yeah I think the only thing, uh, there's just no easy answers. No, it's a society. Basically, we are tribal people. We're looking at it as a, if you look at it from an outside point of view, humans are irrational in general. We are also extremely tribal. And in our DNA, we want to. Basically, we want to gravitate to those who look and think like ourselves and exclude others. And that's not going to get us anywhere anymore in a globalist society. And that's also one of the big right, right wing things that people hate is the globalist society. They want to be isolationist. They want to keep within their tribe. But in order to progress and to keep ourselves alive as a species, we need to put that aside and band together and sort our shit out because we're not going to get anywhere by being isolationist. No, but the internet is the perfect for isolationist because you can just 
find a community very easy to find a community of like-minded people and yes yeah, so it's a double-edged sword because it unites us but it also divides us yeah because you'd figure oh we're exposed to all the cultures everybody else it should remove that basic fear that other people have like that people have of other cultures and other systems you know it should remove the fear but it, for some reason you have a couple of people with voices that are louder than the others reinforcing that fear yeah and that's on both sides that's also on our side and on the other side like you look at isis and daesh and and uh, al-qaeda a lot of the people there in that area don't even have access to the internet, but the caliphs do. So they take all the stuff and they spread it to spread it to the people. And it's it's a double it, it's it works for both sides of us, them and us. Yeah, and that's all we can do is just keep calling it out when we see it. Exactly. Eventually, we'll either blow ourselves up or turn into Star Trek. I'm hoping to turn into Star Trek. I'm up for some Star Trek. I want the, right. uh, I want, I want the, the food replicator. Yeah, I, I want the transporters. Yeah, that too. Food replicator and transporters. Like, hey, I'd like a curry right now. I don't have to go anywhere. It's just right there. Curry, boom. Yeah, that works for me. If it's funny, gets the recipe right. Yeah. You see, it's like, yeah, Star Trek. Everybody works together. There's no greed. There's no capitalism. Well, there is if you're a Ferengi, but that's their culture. You know, Star Trek is the ideal, that's what we can actually become if we band together and sort our shit out. But that didn't happen until World War Three, according to the Star Trek lore. Yeah, we haven't had that yet. Yet. Well, no, we had the, there. um, what was I going to say? We had the... They had World War Three, and then they met the Vulcans. That's right. They, they made the uh, yeah. They met the Vulcans, and that's what helped us out because we needed a good dose of logic because we we're kind of all kind of emotional and crazy. That's it, indeed. The space elves. That's basically what they are. Space elves come and help us out. We could do with those right about now. No, I think they're just. I think. Uh, I think extraterrestrials are avoiding us because we're like this case of space herpes they're probably avoiding us to see well will they eradicate themselves if they're if not then we'll kind of help them but if but you know what we're just gonna let them do their thing it's you know i forget the name it's a a, a paradox as of why we haven't encountered any spacefaring like spacefaring races yet it, every society reaches a certain point in its development where they either destroy themselves or sort their shit out. Yeah. And I believe we're at that as a, as a species and as a society, we are at that tipping point, whether we're going to blow, we're going to fuck ourselves or sort our shit out and get off to the stars. And very few societies manage to get through there, but we're only going by ours. Yeah. I forget the name of that paradox, but I actually, what was funny is I was, um, <clears throat> I was enjoying some, <clears throat> for lack of a better term, because I'm in Canada, therefore it is legal. And I had that thought when I was stoned. And then I'm like, someone's like, oh yeah, that's a parrot. That's this something, something paradox. I'm like, oh my God. I thought I actually had an original thought for once, <laughs> but I came with it up, up with it independently before someone told me I wasn't that original. Nah, just just claim you made it up. It's fine. There's only like it's probably they're probably the only person who knows the name of the paradox anyway. No, uh, I don't. Re well, Neil deGrasse Tyson knows the actual name of the paradox. I just forget it because uh, I'm. I just well, woke just, up about two hours. Yeah, just don't tell him. It'll be alright. Yeah, just okay. let's wrap this all up because um, I'm just where the time and I've got to wrap, finish this blog up. The biggest paradox, speaking of paradoxes, is the tolerance intolerance one mm. i'm trying to remember which way the way it goes yeah you're intolerant of my into you're intolerant of my intolerant views like yeah. you expect me to be tolerant of your love and acceptance but why can't you be tolerant of me saying i hate all muslims yeah that's just no 
No, the other, the other way the way it gets put is tr- you, you can't have a tr- to have a truly tolerant society. You have to be intolerant to intolerance. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. It goes. I can't actually remember exactly how it goes. But I, how can I be tolerant of somebody who wants to take rights and lives away from innocent people? I can't be tolerant of that. I cannot tolerate it when someone wants to remove rights and and like and, and lives of people like i don't care what color skin they are they are people like you and me and i cannot be tolerant of somebody who wants to remove rights and their right and and lives of people like you know i just can't i can't be tolerant of that no no and then they just hide behind the free speech argument and just just we seem to be in a big melting pot of we're not entirely sure where to go with it yeah and, and we're at, as I said, we're at that tipping point as a society, whether or not we're going to destroy it, destroy ourselves or get past. And that's the hard part there. Yes. Thank you very much. That was lovely. Not a problem. I'm just going to end the Discord call, wrap up the vlog, and then I'll message you. All right. Have a good one. And you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I had another voice there because I'm literally just like so many things I didn't think of. It's just bizarre the world we're in at the moment. I don't really think it knows where it wants to go. So, yeah. Actually, I'm just going to wrap the vlog up. I'm not going to talk about streaming or anything. I'm just going to leave this out there for you guys let me know what you think agree disagree keep it flipping uh, you know if you disagree it's fine just be respectful about it because i you know the, the, they're, 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 you know as i said a lot of people seem to get in their head that disagree with something any justification any response is justified no so it's just let's have it's this conversation needs to be had but it can't be had if we're going to be screaming over each other so over to you guys. I'm off. I'll see you in a stream sometime. Um, I might do a quick short vlog just to let you know what's happening regarding that. But you guys take care.